Queen, oh, that's right, KSIX Corpus Christi, 1230 AM, 95.1 FM. Streaming live on the internet's there for you at PudgeNation.com, everybody's favorite new website. It's the new sensation across the nations. And Tom, it's not just a website, it's a lifestyle now. You go, yeah, you go, to that, you go to the website, we got a St. Patrick's Day thing going on, on the website right now. We got all sorts of stuff going. I mean, the the, the Is website. Father Hennessy on? You know? <laughs> no, I don't think Father Hennessy made it. I don't think. Uh, well, yeah, he he recovered, you know. Yeah, but no, I don't think Father Hennessy has a. Uh, uh, made it onto the Pudge Nation website, but the day's young. Yeah. You know, it'd be fun to find a picture of Father Hennessy. I don't know. I think his name was Patrick Hennessy. I think is what his name was. I'll have to look and see. If I, maybe like in the old, maybe if St. Luke's has a website, maybe they'll have a picture of Father Hennessy or something like that. May he rest in peace. Uh, of course, today is St. Patrick's Day. So uh, hopefully you're wearing green, Tom. <clears throat> I'm gonna go on. The, I'm gonna say that your underwear is probably green, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, Mike, man. Mike's got green. Mike's got green. It wasn't supposed to be green. Yeah, but no. It yeah. Green it's a moldy time. shirt, is what he's wearing. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do that. Yeah. Maybe you still got some lettuce from uh, yeah yesterday's lunch. Uh, I'm wearing my uh, green Tony, uh, Tommy Bahama. Uh, sure, yeah, right. And, of course, uh, hopefully everybody remembers, like, oh, i got to wear green again today. Or unless, you know, hey, that's your deal, man. I'm not here to judge. You like getting pinched? All right, this is your day, you know, <laughs> all day long. <laughs> so, anyway, happy St. Patrick's Day. It, it's a perfect storm. This is when I remember this happened in 1983. I had St. Patrick's Day, spring break, and round one of the big dance all happened on the same day. And of all places, you know where I was? I'm not making this up. I was at Dirty's uh, on, on the drag in Austin. Uh, home, one of my favorite places in the world. Home of the greatest, greasiest, most unhealthy cheeseburger you will ever, ever have. Bacon cheeseburger. And, and the coldest, the only beer that I've ever had that was colder than Dirty's was at Wrigley Field. Wrigley Field, that was bar none coldest beer I ever had. It went down like water. That's what makes it dangerous, right? Um, but Dirty's right there. I remember, I can, if I close my eyes like I'm doing right now, close your eyes, okay. I can remember sitting at Dirty's the first time I ever went. My, my journalism teacher, Mr. Craycroft, he um, was a graduate of UT Austin. So he had a whole bunch of us slobs who were there for a journalism convention. So imagine, he's in charge of a whole bunch of teenage kids. Teenagers, right? right? You know, his life Those sucks. Yeah, right? And so, uh, but he made it fun. So there we are. So he's taking us to his old stomping grounds. So he takes us on Guadalupe, man. And he takes us to Dirty's, right? And I remember we sat at the table, which the, everybody knows the table, oh, yeah. where everybody's carved their, you know, their, yeah. their names. And what's really cool is you'll see generations. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see, like, let's say Bob Smith, and it says class of 32. And then you'll see Bob Smith Jr., and it'll be class of 61. And then it'll be Bob Smith III, class of 80. You know, and, and you'll see entire families, generations on this huge wooden table, right? Yeah. And what was cool sitting at that table was that there was a four-drawer uh, file cabinet across the room. And on top of the four-drawer file cabinet was this little, like, 13-inch TV, right? With antennas and foil on the antenna to get a picture. And that was the year NC State won. And wow. so that was my that was my introduction to the big dance. 83. And and I'm watching and of course if you recall those first rounds with Valvano, NC State was winning like at the buzzer and stuff like this. And they were such an underdog, they were not supposed to be winning those games. So there I was having my first dirties bacon cheeseburger, yeah. having <clears throat> an ice cold beverage. Yes. You know, look the other way, thank you. Yeah. And uh just, you know, and just taking the whole experience and across the street from UT, yeah. you know. Now, the sad story, and I told, I told you this yesterday, Tom, last night at the Surf Club. I just saw a, a friend of mine posted online that uh, there's, I guess, you know, because the, the, the transportation system in Austin is horrific. Right. Whoever designed Austin did not think this through. No, right? they did not. The, Austin is one big parking lot. Yeah. Right? Okay. So they've grown a brain and said they're going to build a rail system in Austin, a proposed rail system. Which is a good idea. Yeah, with a, a proposed uh, track, yeah. right? Well, these idiots 
put the track, the path of the track, where they have to tear down dirties. No way. So a petition is going around right now in Austin to save dirties. Yeah. And so I signed it yesterday. Good for you. And I and, I and on not only that, but I made a comment and I said, "You can tear down the state capital before you tear down dirties." Yeah. You know, yeah. that's where dirty fits in this whole exactly. thing, you know. So in any case, but that's spring break. And it was cool. It was St. Patrick's Day, spring break, March Madness, just like today. Yeah. You know, we got uh, round one of March Madness beginning at 1115 this morning where Michigan will be playing. Um, and the last game will start at about nine o'clock tonight meaning that basketball will end at about 11.30 tonight, right? So in other words, basically 12 hours, wall-to-wall, nonstop, four networks on TV of college basketball, win or go home. And that's just, you know, so there it is. I I need to be in Austin at dirties right now is what I need to be, you know. But I'm not because I'm at a destination itself, which is known as good old Corpus Christi, Texas, U.S. of A., Right. right. Okay. I mean, people. I I was over at uh, Snoopy's the night before last, mm-hmm. and originally I went to Doc's. Right. Mm-hmm. And the wait was like an hour and a half. I'm like, oh hell no. Right. So I walked over. I had a, and on top of it all, I had a great parking spot at Doc's. When do you ever get that? You know. Huh. And so um, I walked over to Snoopy's. Right. And uh, it was who knew it was karaoke night or whatever. You know. But as I'm walking through the parking lot, I'm looking at the license plates. I'm seeing Kentucky. I'm seeing Tennessee. I'm seeing, so I'm seeing people from around the country. They've, they've decided for spring break to come right here to good old Corpus Christi, Texas, U.S. of A. Where else? I know, right? And so, no. Do we have dirties? No, we don't, right? But I'll tell you what we do have. We have the Executive Surf Club. Yeah. You know? Right, yeah, right? Mike, you know dirties, right? You've had your fair share of good... You know, clogging grease uh, for lunch, right? Okay, know. the best about dirties, if, you know, when I was a student and really couldn't afford a bacon cheeseburger. Right. I would just order a cheeseburger. Right. When one of my rich fraternity brother friends was ordering a bacon cheeseburger. Mm. And it was like eating a bacon cheeseburger because it was cooked on the same grill where they were. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Bacon. Oh, well, my. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what. The beauty of dirties is that they haven't cleaned that grill since 74. And they better not. They never better. Yeah, it was a sad day when he passed. You know, he passed away a few years back. Yeah, we lost dirty, man. But I'll tell you what, that, that, the grill still hasn't been cleaned. It's beautiful, you know. Um, but what we do have is the surf club. And the surf club, I mean, is able to stand on its own. It's got its own vibe. It's, it's cool. You know, Brad Lomax, he's done a great job between, uh, well, that whole block. Yeah. You know, he's got, he's got the surf club. He's got Water Street. He's got uh, the Texas uh, Music Hall of Fame, Walk of Fame thing, you know. Yeah. Got, you know, and, and so it's, it's a cool vibe. So, in other words, if you've driven down here from Kentucky... And you want to feel like you're at the beach and you're, you know, Gulf of Mexico. You, you know, you can do a lot worse than going to the surf club, you know. And that's without you having to go out to the island, go out to Port A, where it's just mayhem, right? right. Well, of course, today it being St. Patrick's Day, um, Lomax and the boys over there, they've done a great job as far as preparing us for entertainment tonight. Oh, yeah. if, if, you know, you have options of where you want to go for um, your St. Patrick's celebration. You can do an entire pub crawl downtown, right. which would be the smart thing to do, you know, with a designated driver. Okay? Yes. You know, yes. Get an Uber, right? But anyway, um, i got a good reason on why you should go to the surf club, Mike. And the reason why is because Matt Hole and the Hot Rod Gang are going to play. Now, Matt Hole... He is a staple here in the Coastal Bend. Matt's been gigging down here. How many years have you been playing, man, down here in Corpus? Uh, since 94. Since 94? Okay. And if you've never had a chance to see Matt Hall, okay, first of all, what's wrong with you? You should get, right. punched. You should get yeah. punched in the throat. Shame on you. Right? Punched in the throat right there. But uh, it, make an effort. Let, let that streak come to an end today. Okay? Go to Surf Club tonight and check out Matt. Matt Hole and the Hot Rod Gang. The, uh, you got, what, you're going to do a, a usual set of Matt Hole and the Hot Rod Gang, right? Like a <clears throat> two-hour set straight through. Oh, oh okay. So. <laughs> no, we no. have <laughs> recorded in a long, long time. Okay, well, here's the thing. Matt, I think I have some of your old CDs, dude. I really do. I think everyone does. Yeah, from yeah. back in the day, right? Yeah. But uh, Matt, uh, it, basically, he gives Brian Setzer a run for his money. 
Okay. Oh come on. I'm serious. I mean, hey, look, you got you got no, no, two no, no, no. you got two guitarists right here sitting in front of you, Holmes. Okay. Um, Matt Hole and, and the style of music that you play, you know, with the whole rockabilly thing. You know, I mean, all of us we have a little less hair than we when yeah. we started this whole mm -hmm. thing. But I mean, you still you got your hair slicked back, Jack. You know. Well, you know, it's, yeah, it's just it's the only way to cover up the boldness right now. <laughs> You and me, you and me both. It's been a long time since I've uh, had a pompadour. Yeah, no. but that's I, re I remember you with the jeans, the rolled up with the boots, and you got the sleeveless shirt going, and you got the pompadour going, and a beautiful guitar. Yes. And, and you guys would just rock the house, man. Well, I'm going to be playing my green guitar tonight. I no, won't necessarily be wearing green, but yeah. Oh, well, I'll be close. It'll be my green Gretsch. Oh, there oh, you go, boy. A green Gretsch. You gotta like that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, in any case, come on out to. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, Logan says hi on the uh, Facebook Good. Live. Hello, Logan. Yeah, he's over at the Exchange now. Um, anyway, so you're going to be playing tonight over at, uh, at at Surf Club. Now, let's go back here a little bit. Now, you and I first met a century ago, literally. I think so. Right yeah, when I was at C101. Yeah, that's how far back you and I go. Uh, and I got here in town in 97, right around there. 96, 97 is when I got in town. And the uh, first time I saw you, I was just like, holy cow, who's this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, and we actually had some of your CDs. Well, we used to work, we used to do a lot of C101, like that, uh, sound sculptures. Yeah, yeah. We used yeah. to play out there quite, yeah, quite a bit. With the C sculptures. C sculptures, yes. Yeah, yeah, and all that fun stuff. And then um, when I started up Texas Radio here in town uh, on Daddy D's radio station, which now is it's still Texas music. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the same about how I used to do it, but, you know, okay. But in any case, uh, I used to play your music there. And guys would be like, dude, because they were ready to hear Reckless Kelly or Roger Craig or Kevin Fowler. And then all of a sudden they'd hear Matt Holt. And they're like, okay, what part of this is Texas? And I'd go, dude, in a weird about way, he's from Texas because the band's from here. But even then, I mean, you're not from Texas. Where are you from? Uh, born and raised in Southampton, England. Really? Yes. Okay, so how does one go from Southampton, England? And you end up in court. What'd you do? Throw a dart? I mean, how do you end up in Corpus? Uh, well, you start by getting in a lot of trouble as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that sounds like a good rock and roll story right there, you know? And then, you know, after so many stints in court and uh, the police chasing you once in a while, you decide to s skip bail type thing. <laughs> just, so, in other words, it's been a while since you've been back to Southampton? Uh, actually, Yorkshire, North Yorkshire. Oh, but Yorkshire. No, I actually landed in Florida, uh, tore my return ticket up in the airport, and told myself I was going to make it, and uh, ended up in Corpus Christi, met my first wife, and uh, of course, it's always a woman, that's how you end up in, yeah, in yeah. CC. Yeah, no kidding, right? Well, that right there is a song. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I tore up my, my return ticket home. And follow a girl to Corpus Christi. Yes, and I've been here ever since. You know, I love this city. There's nothing wrong with this city. Not at all. No, not at all. I, the, you know, the reason uh, why people sometimes downtrod on, on Corpus, I've never understood. I, don't, I just I just think they don't get it. They don't understand Corpus. The, those are the type of people that leave for a year, and they always come back. <laughs> they do, don't they? I, I mean, I, I've seen it a hundred times. Yeah. Now, when did you start playing? As far as, how did, how did you end up picking up a guitar? Well, my dad was in a, um, a professional band in the 60s called the Medievals. Um, actually toured with The Who and even sang with The Who when Roger Daltrey lost his voice a couple of times. So growing up uh, in a house with two brothers and my father being a musician, we all played. You know, there were guitars everywhere, pianos. And so it was just natural. Okay, Chris has texted. By the way, in today's world of radio, we now are able to text. Our listeners can text us in real time. Wow. So I've got a, I've got a, a, a thing here that says, Good morning, gentlemen. Matt Jams. Always a great show. We often got impromptu jam sessions at my dad's place, Oso Pier. Uh, good dude. Looking forward to seeing him play again soon. Stay gold, Matt. Oh, Ask Matt if he remembers the day the storm blew through the Oso Pier, and we all thought we were going to die. Sign oh. Chris. Oh yeah, I remember that day like it was yesterday. Really? What happened? It was uh, it was a gorgeous day, and myself and all our friends were out on the pier, and we saw what looked like 
a tornado in the distance and one of our friends had a brand new Corvette and we're like, you know, you need to move that like somewhere else. And uh, then all of us, he said, no, it's fine, it's fine. So then it just getting closer and closer to the pier and it was like a tornado and we all ran inside Oso Pier and it just ripped the place apart. I mean, it, wow. ripped, it ripped this huge sign billboard off the top of the building and it landed right on our buddy's Corvette. Oh, oh no. <laughs> After we told him that he should have moved it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, last time at Surf Club, can't make this up, and somebody in this town is driving a convertible 64 Corvette. Ooh. This thing was gorgeous. Yeah. Wide exterior, wide interior. He had the roof down and everything. Uh, anyway, I digress. Hey, that's a good digression. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Hey, we're talking with Matt Hole, who of course is playing tonight. It's St. Patrick's Day a gig over at uh, the uh, Surf Club, located in downtown Corpus Christi. What time are you hitting the stage? I think uh, Kevin Kirst is going on before us. He's a country uh, solo artist here in town. Um, I think we go on around about 8.30. 8.30. It, it, it depends what time uh, yeah. the guys show up. Okay. You know, you know how that is. <laughs> are we all here? Yeah, okay, yeah. roll call. Okay, now, and, and once again, and I'm not embellishing, man. If you have a chance to go see Matt play, you will, you will thank me tomorrow, and I'll, uh, ahead of time I will say you're welcome. Okay, so, uh, throughout your mu musical career, I mean, you've got, I mean, a lot, of, you guys hit the road there for a while, like in the 90s and the early 2000s. Yeah, right? we you did. gigging everywhere, right? We did, uh, you know, our little tours of Hollywood and up and down to Arizona and stuff. I never liked being on the road with a bunch of guys. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, yeah. I don't know how these people do it. I mean, unless you've got a tour bus and you've got your own room and stuff. I mean, sharing a, a van with three or four sweaty people is 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 not fun. There wasn't a romance to it. I mean, as no. far yeah, because you saw where Dave Grohl did a he did a documentary and he interviewed a lot of a lot of bands uh, that talking about their early days of how you you start out in a van. You got all your gear, you got the guy, like you're saying, the Beatles, they drove in a van that didn't have a windshield. Yeah, Aerosmith yeah. too. I mean, I knew from day one when I formed the band or started the band, I did not want to do it for a living. And yeah. I think that's probably, it was always in the back of my mind. So I never progressed or looked to, you know, better myself or as far as luxury wise. Yeah, I think the most luxurious thing we did was get paid to fly to Japan and play. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, oh. that's not, Well, in Japan, I mean, they're huge, huge fans of old school rock and roll. Well, Japan. this was a, it was an Americana festival, so okay. there was a, you know tons of uh, tons of Harley Davidsons and uh, American cars, and so right. they, they wanted some American music. Okay, so share with the class, Matt. As far as the for somebody who's never seen you perform, describe the kind of music that you you and your band play. Uh, it's like maybe it, I mean I'm sure a lot of people don't remember the Stray Cats, but it's it's kind of like the Stray Cats on steroids a little exactly. bit. Yes, that, that's a that's a, a that's exactly. a perfect perfect explanation. Perfect. It's that's ramped right. up rockabilly. It's right. Yeah, it's, I mean some people call it psychobilly. We're not psychobilly. Psychobilly is more you know, punk based. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, but I mean, and, and it's like non-stop. You just, you just start going. Oh, well, yeah. Once you start, you can't stop. No, <laughs> I guess not, right? Right. And you know, so like right now, you, you remind me of so many people I've interviewed that are musicians. Right now, you're so low key. You got your your cute little English accent going here. You know, and, and you know, you just kind of, you know, just kind of. But as soon as you hit that stage, what 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 switch is that that hits your brain? Man? I have no clue. Um, I don't even think about it. It's, uh, it's like, oh shoot, F uh, uh, five minutes, I've got to go on. I mean, there's, yeah. there's no pre-stage uh, ritual I do, or it's right. just, I, I, I try and start the first, the set out with a song that's gonna you know, make me happy. Right. And then from that song on, it's just, then I just keep picking the ones on my list of, you know, this is going to rock. I'm, right, it's, right. It's not going to be boring. It's going to be a great rock and roll show. Oh, and, absolutely. And it is like, it's, it, it, yeah, straight cats on steroids. You know, and that's why, you know, I compare you to Brian Setzer. Right? Your, 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 your modesty is, 
appreciate it, but I mean, you're a hell of a guitar player. Oh, thank you. I mean, he's obviously a huge influence on me. I mean, I saw him back home in England when I was 14. Um, I was a huge Stray Cats fan, and just seeing him, him at Leeds University and being at the front of the stage, and him coming right up to me. And then years later, you know, I've done many shows with his bass player, you know, Lee Rucker, and just been on the same bills as them. And right. It's, it's kind of ironic. Tell me the, the best gig you ever played in your career. The one that sticks in your head. Doesn't have to be a big gig, just any gig, but what's the one that really sticks in your head? Uh, I think it was one night at the surf club we played, we opened up for Joe Ely, who's a Texas singer-songwriter. Right. And um, it was a packed house. I mean, there was over 500 people there. And we did our last song and everyone was standing up and screaming and yelling. And it was our last song. You don't do any more when you're opening up for somebody, especially like Joe Ely. And I looked to the side of the stage and Joe Ely was just, you know, shaking his hands and telling us to keep do two more. Oh, really? So, <laughs> Man. I was like, well, thanks, Joe. Yeah. Now, Joe, of course, the, if, I'm, if I'm correct on this, the, the folklorist, he's the one who taught John Lennon how to play the harmonica. Am I right on that? Uh, I wouldn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Joe Ely. Yeah, Joe Ely went to England. And so when you hear Love Me Do and you hear that harmonica and all that, uh, he learned from Joe Ely. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that and opening up for Jerry Lee Lewis, I think, was oh, wow. <laughs> was one of the major highlights. And he didn't kill you. That's amazing. No. Yeah, okay. What was it? Did you get to meet him? No, he walked right by me with his uh, entourage. Yeah. And he's, he was, he's a big fella. Oh, is he really? Oh, yeah. He's tall. He's, I didn't realize that. I thought he, he seems like kind of like an average size, like, you know, old man or something. No, but no? Uh, I mean, I've still got the, I've got the poster. Uh, it was at Nutty Browns in Austin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the poster with the name, my name, and the band's name, and then Jerry Lee Lewis, and it's just that's that's one of the yeah one of the main men right there. No, well, yeah, I mean that's that's the Mount Rushmore right he's, there. He's know? he's the founding father. The million the, dollar club, you know, you yeah. got Johnny Cash, Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, mm -hmm. of all perfect people, Carl Perkins. Yeah, he's the one that everybody forgets about. You know, Carl Perkins would have been Elvis if he hadn't had the car crash. Oh yeah, Carl, yeah. Carl Perkins stole his uh, song while he was in hospital. Yeah, Carl Perkins is in the hospital recovering from uh, in a, a really horrible car accident, and uh, Elvis goes and re-records Blue Suede Shoes, right. yeah. and rest is history. And we, yeah, gets number one. Yeah, go figure, right? Hey, we're talking with Matt Hole, who is performing tonight over at the Executive Surf Club at St. Patrick's Day, so be sure to wear your green unless you just love getting pinched. And so Matt and the boys are going to hit the stage at about 8, 8.30, right around there. It's going to be an entire evening of fun in downtown Corpus Christi, so... Make sure you have a good time tonight. Okay, now, I, I, I want to hear your side. I, I've, I've told this story before, and uh, it's, it, it happened. It's, it, it's, as my audience will tell you, Matt, I'm pretty... I did not pee on the Alamo. No, that was not you. That was somebody else. That was somebody else. Same accent, though. You know, but We're able to understand when you speak, though. Yeah. So I'm doing Texas radio, right? I'm on the air this one afternoon, right? And... Uh, I play this song. It's Texas by Chris Rea. Mm -hmm. Right? And, uh, and there, once again, like I was saying, you know, everybody's like, why the hell? You know, they're, they're wanting to hear cross Canadian ragweed. Right? And I'm over here playing Chris Rea. And they're like, he's not even from Texas. He's from North Yorkshire, Middlesbrough, England. Uh, uh, thank, okay. Well, all right. All right. But here, <laughs> so, and, and, but I'm going, yeah, but the name of the song is Texas. It, it, it makes sense. And not only that, but his voice is such a deep, gravelly, soulful uh, presentation of vocals that it just it fit it just I, I go by sound you know I don't care about your backstory I just a good song is a good song that's all I care about and so I played this song and the copy I have to this day is a copy that I got when I was working at a radio station in Austin called Z102 back in the day Austin's album rock right and so that's when I first heard this song and I was like oh my god this this song is amazing right so the CD that I had was straight from the label. So on the little paper sleeve in the CD, they had a quick little bio about Chris Rea. And on the bio, it says that he's from Australia. Right? And so, so I'm, you know, so I played the song and I'm all proud of myself because I'm introducing my audience to a song they've never heard before from an artist they've never heard before. And people are calling in going, man, who was that? And all this stuff. And so the song ends 
And I start doing my thing, talking about how that's Chris Rea, and by the way, he's from Australia. Well, of course, I had this, this, this machine that you see in the movies when you depict a, a radio station that you know, had multiple phone lines on it, right? And so all the lines are, are blinking at me. So all the phone lines are all lit up. And so randomly I pick line three, you know, so I hit the line, I hit the button and I go, hey, uh, Texas radio, how can I help you? And it's you, it's you, man. And you're there, and I, I can't do the British accent, but you know, you, you basically don't, say, don't. "I know, right?" <laughs> you 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 uh, you say, "Hey, man, uh, I, I hate to break this to you, but Chris Ray is from not not from Australia." And I go, "What are you talking about?" And it's, yeah, he's from. You know, I'm in fact, he's from Australia. You don't know what the hell you're talking. And you're and you're being polite, as one from Yorkshire would, you know, or Southampton. You're going, um, "No, he, he, he's, he's not from Australia." And I'm like, uh, hey man, you don't, you know, I'm sorry to, to correct you, sir, but he's from Australia. I know that for a fact. And then you finally you broke, and you're like, all right, you're, you're making me do this to you. I hate to do this to you, guy. And he says, but uh, he's from England. And that's why I'm like, oh hell no, he's not from England. And you're and you're like, yeah, he is. And I go, okay, how do you know he's from England? And this is what, and you go, uh, we grew up together in, in England. He grew up next to me as kids. <laughs> And that's when I was like, oh, okay, well, I, I guess you would know, you know. <laughs> so, I'm like, that's how I received it on my end. On your end, you're listening, first of all, you're hearing Chris Rea on the radio. And, and all of a sudden, you got some idiot DJ going, he's from Australia. Now, tell me your, your, your relationship with Chris Rea. First I, I mean, I didn't grow up with him. He he was he lived in Middlesbrough, which is about thirty miles from where I, I was living. But in the in the early nineties, my dad had a band, um, the Werewolves of Stockton, a blues band, and Chris Reed's drummer was my dad's drummer. So there's there's a, that's the only connection we really had. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, he used to tell a lot of stories of you know being on the road with Chris. And, yeah. But he's definitely not from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you know, hey, you know, I'm human. Yeah, blame the, no, blame the label, man. The label's the one that told me he was from Australia. Well, we stereotype. We hear a non, we hear a non-American, uh, English, you know, speaking English accent. And we automatically think, you know, no, it's 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 British, or it's yeah. we think the, that the Australian is British. We yeah. think the British is Australian. No one and ever, then the New Zealanders. Oh my God! No one ever mentions New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You know, when people ask me where I'm from, I just say Robstown, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, they just walk away with a, a blank look on their face. Now, what inspired you to play the music that you play? I mean, out of all the stuff you could have played growing up in England. What, why why did you go the route you went? What was what was what tickled your fancy? Well, that would be my father's record collection, um, which was nothing but um, early American, you know, Buddy Holly, uh, Eddie Cochran, um, just roots rock and roll, Elvis yeah. Presley. Yeah. So you know, all my friends in the early '80s were listening to punk or new wave. I was digging out my dad's old records, and um, you know. Buddy Holly, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis. I mean, the, the, the list is endless of what I was listening to. And so, how old were you when you got your first guitar? I think it was probably about nine. And who gave it to you? My dad. Your dad? Was it one of his or you got your No, dad? it was an acoustic guitar and I got pissed one day and smashed it up. So it stayed in my wardrobe for about two years because I was too scared to tell him. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> okay. And so, your, uh, your first plug-in? Well, the first plug-in was uh, a Tokai Stratocaster, which is a Japanese-made, they used to make copies of American guitars, and they used to make them better than Fender and better than Gibson. In fact, there was a lawsuit. And wow. If I, if I could find that, you know, a Tokai Strat, I would trade my American Strat in for it any day. Yeah, really? Oh, they're, they're, they're that good. They're that good. Huh? Let me guess the the uh, the lawsuit. It wasn't to make them quit making them. It was making make them quit make them better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no kidding, it's, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, they the, even the the name on the headstock looked like Fender. Oh, did it? Yeah. yeah. So it was in Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, kids, we're talking with Matt Hole, who's a uh, Matt Hole and Hot Rod Gang. How'd you come up with the name of that? Oh, there's a story. 
I'll try and keep it brief. We used to play every Wednesday at the open mic on, uh, with Michael O'Connor, he was the host, and J.B. Braden. And um, he used to get up out on stage last, because it got to the point where people were coming out just to watch us play. And we probably out lived our stay on the Wednesday nights, and one night Mike said, let's get Matt Hall and his hot rod gang out here. So, oh, that simple, huh? That simple, it just stayed. I think that was our last time we played the open mic. <laughs> After that, it was, uh, you know, we started getting offers from local bars and yeah, clubs yeah. to play. Yeah. So you pretty much have played everywhere here in town, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So when did you stop gigging so hard, and how come? Um, well, in the mid '90s, you know, a lot of the kids that were watching us, they, they got older. They moved on to college. Yeah. You know, they had kids of their own, and it, you know, what it's like, Tom. The, the music scene just really faded away. There's live music just really wasn't desired, desired as much as it used to be. Like in the early early '90s, early '90s, you couldn't move in the surf club or other places, you know, right. at, at tomfooleries or, huh. you know, places like that. Right, right. I mean, we've, I've played so many places that aren't even there anymore. Right. It's, it's hilarious. And so, cover bands, cover bands did huge business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a thing. Yeah. And, and so, is that what got you to just kind of back off from playing so much? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, not just that, it's like, I'd see some bands that play all the time, and I didn't want to be that person, that band that people say, oh, I just saw him the other day, I'm not going to go see him. So right. I really kind of limited it, it down to like once a month or once every six weeks, right. playing locally, and then we would play out of town, you know, right. b between that. Right. And so you kept in touch with the guys, and how often do you gig now? Maybe once a month. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, so where do you play when you leave, when you leave town? Uh, we used to play Austin a lot. Um, um, you done South by Southwest? Never done it. Yeah. Always been like an anti South by Southwest. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, I went to the very first one. There was literally six of us in the crowd, and it was a panel, and it was Kim Wilson. It was the manager for the Fab T Birds, and it was a guy from Geffen, and it was their label, and it was the guy that put South by Southwest together. And the whole premise was, if you wanted to find out how to get your band signed, because we I was managing a band at the time, we were trying to figure out, man, how you can sign? That was the whole thing. You wanted to get signed to a label. And they said, well, we've come up with this thing, and it's called South by, and it, that's all it was. It was six of us in a conference room. You know, they'd set up rows of chairs. It was really sad. It was like rows of chairs, and, and they, they, you know, they had it up there for like 100 people to sit there, and there were six of us. And that was the very first South by South. Wow. Place. I mean, I, I remember years ago, my older brother, he works, or well, he used to work for Epitaph Records. Yeah. And they flew him down to Austin yeah. for South by South by West. And he never left his hotel. Oh, he really? Was, he, was like, he, he said, this is just such a bunch of... You know. <laughs> yeah. And no, it's a whole different thing. It is. And I, I never, you know, the whole pay-to-play thing... Yeah. Back then, I was just, I'm not doing this. I remember uh, Prince did a, a surprise show, right? And it was the worst thing. You never want to see it happen. Uh, Mark Goodman from MTV, okay? He arrives there. Now, this is way past MTV days, right? And uh, the, the show is sold out. It's Prince. You're not getting in, you know? And uh, unless he has one of these special tickets. And he pulled the line. You know who I am? I'm Mark Goodman. And everybody, I mean, worst place you can see that is in Austin, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. and, and the whole place was just like, oh, he went there. You know, just, <laughs> he caught a rap, didn't get in, just slinked away, uh, away from the parking lot. You That's know? hilarious. Oh, it was just. I'm yeah. Mark Goodman. Well, I'm James Street. <laughs> yeah, so there. Now, well, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see who gets their meal purchased first around here. <laughs> James Street or Mark Goodman? Anyway. I mean, well, he rest in peace. Absolutely. One of the reasons, you know, we don't play in Austin so much now is what you were talking about earlier on is the traffic. I just, I cannot abide it. It's just, 
Yeah. It drives me crazy. And so when you went, you, you mentioned in, in kind of just woo, went right over it, but I'd like to go there for a second. You said you played in Hollywood or you did a, a Hollywood thing? What, oh, what was yeah. that? What would you do there in Hollywood? Um, they, they have rockabilly festivals and, you know, we co-headlined a couple of them. Um, at the Bar Deluxe, which is right off Sunset Strip. Yeah. So we drove up there a couple of times and flew a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. It was great. I mean, that's that's when rockabilly was really at its heyday. I mean, you you they they use rockabilly music and ska music for commercials. And so it was it was pretty big. Did you ever get to hang with the Blasters while you were out there? No, not no. the Blasters. No, yeah. That's. Uh, that band, I love the hell out of that. Band. Oh yeah. yeah, they're still playing the, the yeah. brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just did something like about a year or two ago, as a matter. They of were just in San Antonio, I think. Were they really? Uh -huh. Once again, baby bros. Like you know, Bob Dylan was in San Antonio uh -huh. one day. I didn't. A friend of mine got a ticket for hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, yeah, must be the same guy, <laughs> Earl. Yeah, we were hanging yeah. out. Yeah, what's Earl? Was Earl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we were hanging out with Earl last night, and he was telling. I'm like, what? Yeah, and he's like sixth row. I'm like, oh, stop it, man. I would have paid that, you know? But he also said that, you know, he hid behind the piano the whole time and didn't, Yeah, you know, wasn't yeah. really visible. No, so. no, he it looked like, according to Earl, he said he was struggling, kind of moving mm -hmm. around and so forth. Uh, Bob Dylan was. Yeah. Holding on to the mic stand. Not moving yeah. too much, you know? Well, I mean, how old is Bob now? 80-something, right? He's, he's got to be. Yeah, his age starts with an eight now. Yeah. And luckily ours doesn't yet. And so Not because quite. of that, we're going to have a fun time tonight. And I, I want to thank you, Matt, for coming in this morning. You're welcome. And let's, let's get everybody out to the surf club. Yeah, uh, come out and enjoy some uh, green beer. And uh, they, they do have great food there. And uh, we, we start the show around about 8.30. So. Okay. Nice. Bring I'm some. looking forward to it. I, I haven't seen you play in forever, man. Well, tonight's the night. I guess so. <laughs> All right, kids. Well, there you go. Matt Hole and the Hot Rod Gang at the surf club tonight to help us celebrate St. Patrick's Day. We'll see you there. All right, it's the Halftime Report with Pudge, and we'll be back right after this. All right, I want to thank, uh, let's see, who, man, let's see who we got here. We got Rolando and Jaime and Andrew and Simon and Logan. Uh, Logan says, Matt! Okay, Chris says, such an animated fellow. Mark, Christopher, Red Pony Boy. He says, uh, good morning, Pudge Nation, ready for March Madness. And who else we got here? Um... Uh, Let's see here. Uh, Terry and Irma and uh, Red Pony Boy. Oh, well, Matt, uh, let's see. Apparently there was a conversation going back and forth. These people are just catching on because uh, uh, Red Pony Boy was all about March Madness. And Logan says, uh, hey, Red Pony Boy, uh, this isn't a sports show. Put some laughing emojis. And then Red Pony Boy goes, yeah, I know, Logan. I'm waiting for the recipe on how to make jalapeno pancakes with cream cheese. Well, first of all, you get a, a, a pancake. You put a hole in it, you put cream cheese in there, and stick a jalapeno in there. Voila! Done! Hey, and Steve, thanks for checking in with us as well. When did I ever say this was a sports talk show? <laughs> anyway, all right, y'all have a great St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. Peace. <laughs>